everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I'm your host and colonel and dad, Garrett Morlang. And here in the virtual studio with me is the king of video games and resident superstar, Adrian Holmes. What's up, Adrian? What's going on, my good man? How are you, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. Only other person in the call. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, yes, no JJ, last minute quitter, JJ. Again. <laughs> um, that, that's his new nickname now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, he's no longer the heavyweight podcasting champion. He's, uh, the heavyweight. He's a contender podcast, now. Po- podcasting quitter of the world. Um, back down to the, <laughs> the, the bottom of the ring, the rung. Right? You gotta, you oh, gotta yeah. work your way back up. Yeah. To champion. Oh yeah. Totally. He's, he's no longer champion. Um, but, uh, yeah, he, uh, last minute was like, oh man, I had something like going on went on later than he thought. So he is not here. So, oh, I got a Sorry. family. Oh, I got to <laughs> feed him. Uh, <laughs> I know. Good right. Grief. Jeez. This, this, you know, send, get, hand, hand him a couple bucks and let him walk to McDonald's. I mean, that's, that's what my that's parents it. did to me. That's One, like, two, hey, three value menu. Out. They'll figure it out. Thank There's you. A, there's a thing called Grubhub now. They can just order food on their phone. DoorDash it. Like, it. Two, yeah, it takes like two Bring them minutes home, and you got food. Give them your phone and just say go crazy. Go crazy. That's all you got to do. Do what you want to do. Um, but no, yeah, not able to join us tonight. Just me and, me and Adrian. You know, the the uh, the trustworthy ones. The Consistency. Ones that you know, yeah, consistent, trustworthy. Uh, you know, like you're getting quality with us. So you're in good hands. You're in good yes. hands. There's a seal of um, quality on our episodes. <laughs> like the, the SGB seal. seal of quality. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that gold seal, like the Nintendo seal. Oh, I don't know. What that, no, we got a different seal. We don't want to get shut down. I'm, just saying, I'm just saying it's similar. It's, it's like that. I'm saying it's similar to that. The though, idea is like, the same, it, yeah. yeah. But the where, actual when design you of it, the seal. Oh, yeah, no, no it looks You know what? Like we should look into that. Doing a super SGB, like, seal of approval. Seal of quality? Yeah. That's what we should put we, on we merch. To, like, uh, Oh, yeah, we could do do merch. I was even thinking like one day when we actually start doing like our game of the year stuff at the end of the year more consistently, like that could be our thing. Just like, oh, yeah, foil Put sticker, there. get the box and slap it <laughs> on there. Um, yeah, I, I was just the other day. It hit me. I'm like, oh, we ne- we never did any sort of game of the year discussion at all for like 2021. Like the year came did we and not? went. No. <laughs> Like in previous years, we've done like separate episodes or like or we'll 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 kind of like hijack an episode, be like, hey, we're not talking about news. We're talking about game of the year. Or if we don't do that, then at the very least, we have like some sort of discussion or segment. And like it hit me that we talked about like contenders and this, that and the other thing. But we never had like a like a topic of the show or anything about our game of the year from last year. I'm like, huh. All right. Well, I, I had to go through my like, list and, and see what what came out last year that I played. Yeah. I played a lot of stuff last year. Yeah, I was saying um, I played a lot. I, 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 I uh, the <laughs> backlog challenge really uh, got me going at the end. Man, of the year. I, I was cranking out games, <laughs> and a lot of them <laughs> new ones because of the game of the year stuff. I'm like, I gotta play all, as many new ones as possible. I mean, if you if you want to preemptively do this year's, I can go ahead and talk about Turtles now because uh, <laughs> that's pretty much where I'm at. I don't see anything right. knocking that off. <laughs> Man, yeah, I. That, and, and I think that's what got me thinking about last year's game of the year was thinking about this year. Like, I can't really, th- honestly, other, I mean, other maybe than Turtles. Cuphead. Maybe okay. Cuphead can knock it off. But it, can you count the DLC, though? Does that work like that? Uh, I mean, we can do what we want. My dad is true. <laughs> when, when we're doing a discussion, when we're, <laughs> when we're running a discussion, we can do whatever the heck we want. Because um, right now, those two are in the running for, like, the best things that I've played all year. And yeah. then Elden Ring is like right behind him. Yeah, like I'm trying to think like what other games like. OK, so, yeah, we have Elden Ring. Oh, Pokemon Legends was this year. Yeah, which uh, was pretty which, good. Which I need. I So since I got the new Switch. Uh, oh, Scarlet and Violet. I forgot about it, those. Oh, yeah, they're coming out later. Um, I it, it didn't hit me until after uh, I got, you know, I had already wiped the other console, got home with the new one, the new. My your Switch saves OLED. are gone. I, I know your pain, brother. Pokemon Legends, gone. Pokemon uh, Brilliant Diamond, gone. Pokemon uh, Sword, gone. And then the big one, Animal Crossing New Horizons, gone. Out of here. I'm like, no, <laughs> all that work on I that freaking island. 
all that Animal Crossing like <laughs> game like all you know that's that was a COVID game you know everyone played that and <laughs> I had this crazy island and just gone like it never existed. Yeah, well. I've made peace with that. I've I've made peace with it. I've moved on. Man, why come on Nintendo? Let us transfer our, at least our Pokemon saves. Like I, no, Gary, I'll, I'll, you can't be trusted. You cannot be trusted, player. We yeah. can't know for sure. There's no honor code for you <laughs> to say that you won't duplicate Pokemon and items. So no, I mean, you're I not probably allowed. will. That's the thing. I probably would. <laughs> That's why they don't let you do it because they don't mm. want you to put all those fake clone Pokemon in the World Trade. Like how it is in X and Y and all the 3DS games right now. Oh, Good luck man. trying to get a legitimate Pokemon there. <laughs> Ain't happening. Man. Um, Kirby and the Forgotten Land came out this year. It did. This is true. Yeah. I have yet to um, experience that one. Let's see. Gran Turismo 7. Oh, there's a game of the year. If I ever done see one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know why that's at the bottom of my list? Because it's too realistic. Too realistic. I don't it's like too it. realistic. Every morning the ray at 725, at 725, <laughs> I go outside. I fire up Gran Turismo 7 for about 10, 15 minutes until I get to work. And then, you know, about on my way home, I fire it up for another 10, 15 minutes. So <laughs> too realistic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, I got to turn off my AC. I keep forgetting every week. I'm sorry, everyone. You have to listen to that in the background of the recording. Let me get that real quick. If you didn't get what I was saying, it's because Gran Turismo is basically real life driving. It's yeah. yeah there's yeah, no fun yeah, in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We get it. We get it. Oh, I was talking to this. the listener. Well, the only listener here is JJ Purdom in the chat. He says, I'm so sorry for not being there to class a podcast up, boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sit there and feed your family. Huh? Yeah. Make sure they're not choking on those nuggets, huh? <laughs> I bet um, you didn't even you didn't even splurge and get them a chocolate shake either, did you? Nope. Oh man, I can go for a milkshake. Me too. Okay, <laughs> I'm like, thinking about it. I when was it? It was it was a, a few months back. I got one from In and Out. They have some pretty good shakes. I like. They have shakes. some excellent shakes. And then, and what happened though is like then the next like week I was craving it, so finally I told Trudy, I'm like. I'm going to go to a grocery store and buy some ice cream. I'll be back. And I literally went out and like <laughs> bought some ice cream, bought like a little like quart of milk or whatever. And then for the next like four days, every night just had a milkshake. <laughs> like I, I, I just plowed through that thing or that, that I, carton of ice cream. I it thought you were so going to say, I thought you were going to say I was going to the store to get some ice cream. I ended up at in and out <laughs> somehow and, out. and just got a milkshake instead. <laughs> I should imagine if I came home with a milkshake and ice cream to make more milkshake. Like, babe, I couldn't resist. Garrett, that's enough. <laughs> but no, like, ah, I was craving it so bad. I'm like, I got to take care of this. So I went to the grocery store, bought my own ice cream and milk. I'm like, there we go. I'm good to go now. Oh, it's so good. I love milkshakes. Uh, man, we should probably talk about video games, though, huh? At some point. This is what some they're point. here for. This is what they're here for. Yeah. They're here for us just talking. That's what it is. That's what it is. Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, finally getting God of War Ragnarok's release date. You don't deserve um, it. The internet does not deserve it. <laughs> no, I mean, after what was that just last week? We we're talking about how dirty and nasty everyone is. And All they had to do like, was wait a couple more days. Yeah, a couple I, more days and you would have got it. You yeah, don't deserve it. Not at all. Uh, GameStop just being a scummy no good low down company just <laughs> trash just shut them all down for uh, real honestly at this point <laughs> yeah uh and uh pax organizers read pop gonna be starting up e3 so next year that is 2023 mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we'll mm -hmm. see we'll see we'll talk about that later but first let's give a quick shout out to our patreon producers Ka Jr. Bumple Smash and Eddie Martin, and our super gamer sponsors, Julie Bates and Mama Mare. If you want to be awesome, just like those folks, head over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys, where you can support us starting at just a dollar a month. And uh, that helps us, you know, support the show by buying uh, games, equipment, whatever, upgrades to the PCs for streaming, whatever we need to do. 
helps us kind of keep the lights on and keep the content rolling in for you guys. So support us over there. It'd be very much appreciated. Uh, and you know what that gets you is episodes early and ad free, such as this one, as well as our Super Gamer Book Club episodes hosted by Adrian. Uh, the new one that's out is the Final Fantasy VII uh, sorry, Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII with Jeremy Schmidt from Video there Games, a comedy show. Fantastic episode to record at PSP uh, Gem there. Uh, and uh, so support us on Patreon to get that one. If you're on the fence and you want to check out Book Club before you support us, uh, find our free feeds. It's on our YouTube channel and on all podcast services. Search for Super Gamer Book Club. Uh, and the free one this month is What Remains of Edith Finch. Another fantastic one. Um such an incredible game and that was that was just uh me and adrian no no special guest on that one that was that was a lot of mano fun. a mano uh and if you're wondering what we're going to be talking about at the end of this month on the new episode it is star wars republic commando uh and that is featuring a special guest boba fletch that's right back Nate from Fletcher. the dead Nate Fletcher back from the dead joining us. Uh, we need to reach out and double check and make sure he remembers that. Uh, That's also but, true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but at this point, he's on the docket to be hosted with us. Uh, and I am excited about that one. We'll talk more about our Patreon later. Um, I want to give one last shout out to uh, here. And this goes out to Jack Sriracha and Yate for allowing us to use their music on our show. Uh, we appreciate it so, so much. They make some killer tracks. You should go listen to them. Check them out on Spotify and Apple Music. Uh, uh, links in the show notes and description for uh, Spotify there. And uh, yeah, go give them a shout out. Go listen to their stuff. Give them all the support. Now, uh, it's time to check the mail. But I He I was supposed to have the bit this week. Remember last that, week? It is true. So there's two things, two, two issues with the mailbag segment this week. One... Uh, JJ was supposed to be in charge of the bit. He promised it last week. And uh, two, I don't know if uh, you saw <laughs> the Discord um, yesterday, but I literally was like, uh-oh, I've ran out of questions. Whatever will I do? Like, there's literally no questions. Like, for the last few weeks, there's been a backlog. Like, there was, like, a big jump where everyone, like, posted a bunch of questions. And then for, like, the next few weeks, I was just able to, like, pick and pull as I what? wanted. Well, I don't like beating people up unless I have to. OK, <laughs> you guys are making it real hard for me to not have to jump in that discord and toss you around a little bit without these questions. OK, I don't want to have to do this. I don't want to have to get in there and, 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 and rough you up, you know, yeah. meet you behind the school at three o'clock <laughs> with, with both of these. All right. Oh, so send in those questions ahead of time or else you're going to get them. Um, I, I just happened to jump back over the chat real quick. And JJ says he's in line at Pizza Hut. That's better than McDonald's. Okay. okay. But then he goes on to say, I don't have a job, so I can't afford shakes. So I'm like, wait, you're buying Pizza Hut, but you can't afford the... Like whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Here's the, here's the concession I'll give you, JJ. No shakes. Stuff crust. Okay. Okay. All right. If you're not getting shakes, you got to give, give them something extra. You can do stuff crust. Dude, I've had pizza in so long. Pizza, it's not so bad, bro. Fucking good. It's so good. I love it. But I it's love also how greasy. It is. You you can't take my opinion. I guess my pizza opinion for for absolute gospel. You know because I am an unabashed You're not a New Yorker like me. Well, that number one and number two, I'm I'm an unabashed Little Caesars fan, right? Because Little Caesars. Hey. I love Little, Little Caesars, Caesars listen, yeah. Little Caesars, when your boy had, you know, he was trying to rub two pennies together, it got me through some some real tight times. And it, it was not <laughs> bad pizza for five dollars. OK, I'm going to say that all day long. And then if you were really balling for like a little while, you could get like you can go up a couple dollars and get that three meat for like seven fifty. <laughs> oh, Whoo, yeah. baby, that was good eating <laughs> with the Italian crazy bread. Forget about it. You will never, ever, ever hear me bad talks, Little Caesars. <laughs> Not once. Dude, I owe yeah, them. <laughs> I, I feel like we did a discussion on yeah one of our episodes. Someone asked about pizza, and yeah, when I brought up Little Caesars, I think yeah you were on my side, but I was surprised at how many people later were just like shocked that we were like so into Little Caesars. Like, no, it's great. No way, like, dude. It's good stuff. Um, but 
I forgot what I was even saying. It's oh, not yeah, my. J, oh, wait, J, okay, JJ, I want to make JJ, this clear. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's not my. It's not my favorite. Okay, on the on the on the pizza totem pole, it is low compared to other pizzas. But I'm saying what you get for what you pay is a quality product. Yeah, when you not, look at it that way, not bad. It's not bad at all. It's not bad. <laughs> it could be a lot worse pizza for six dollars. Okay, <laughs> so yeah. let's let's uh you know give them their flowers while they while they're still here. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I interrupted you. What were you saying? Oh no, I was trying to remember what I was even saying before. Something and about I, JJ. I remember. No, yeah. Well, I was so JJ was supposed to have the bit. We didn't get questions, and then last minute everyone came in with some just wild questions out of left field yeah that's what i thought they started to get spooked they (laughs) felt me on the on the back of their neck (laughs) the hair started standing up yeah well they they maybe got a little too spooked because some of these questions are (laughs) absolutely wild but um (laughs) uh this first one is actually a great question uh and i love talking about this because it's about us um no this is from cjm they write in no gaming question this week, but it would be cool if you guys could give a bit of background about how the podcast came to be and how you guys met. Um, so it would have been awesome if JJ was here since he's one of the founding fathers, um, but he's not. So <laughs> uh, I guess that's just up to me to talk about the inception of the show. Um, Go so, for it. Yeah, uh, I mean, I started, I started at this pest control company back in 2016. And that is where I met JJ. And uh, JJ thought I was the nerdiest guy, child, basically. He's like, you're just a little kid, you know, man, baby child playing video games and watching all these nerdy superhero movies, and blah, blah, blah. And always making fun of me. Playing with your metal gears. Yeah, exactly. And then I slowly and surely was like oh go see this movie check out like i finally convinced him to watch like the marvel movies and i was like go watch iron man here's the order you got to watch go watch the or go watch this that and the other thing got them all caught up he was in and then i'm like oh by the way like you should try video games video games were really cool too and uh he went out and got like a i think he borrowed a ps4 from a family member or something and he played some uh, started out with like last of us and uncharted like those were like his first games he played and he's like mm-hmm. oh my gosh like I didn't know this games is, could be like this. This is right? this is a game changer. This is crazy. Um and uh yeah, he uh uh just fell in love with video games, fell in love with all basically he turned into a big nerd like I was without him even realizing it, you know. We got another one. <laughs> um and that turned into like both of us when when you're doing pest control, you like it's a physical job but it's just like you're by yourself you're in a truck you're out in someone's backyard and like you're not talking to anyone it's quiet busy hot and so what we did the past of time is we listened to podcast i would listen to uh, i forget my podcast app had like a counter on it and i would hit like over eight hours of podcast a day because i worked for eight hours i worked for eight hours plus i'd have like my hour lunch plus you know my drive to and from work so sometimes even like nine ten hours of podcast a day so like i listen to so much podcasts back in the day all the kind of <laughs> funny stuff i had a bunch of D podcasts i listened to i had a bunch of like anything and everything i was listening to this american life like serial because that stuff was big back then um and uh i was like i i want to make a podcast i so badly want to make a podcast uh i because i just am so interested in like the s- storytelling element of it the uh the, just the i don't know the whole making of and then the post-production part of it too like i love editing i love all that that part of it and so i was like i need i need to make a podcast and jj's like oh i want to make a podcast too like i want to do sure he, had all he, these, did. I, he had all these ideas so he wanted to do like a wrestling one and this that and the other thing which he does the wrestling one now he finally yeah, got his dream, some his time, dream came but he true. got around his dream came true suplex city wrestling podcast go check it out uh, produced by by us and um yeah and so it was like hey what if we did a video game podcast where and this is me talking to jj is like where i introduce you to things and that's like the show like we talk about some of the news and stuff happening but really it's like me suggesting movies or games or whatever and then like talking about it so that was like literally the beginning of the show like if you go, if you go back and listen to those early episodes which you should not that <laughs> You have to, for history's sake, you have to preserve for, for, those. They're, they're all there. Trust me. I, I have a 10 terabyte hard drive. It's about, uh, 
has about nine, I think it's it's almost full. I only have like a terabyte left. So it's like nine out of the 10 terabytes are full of all Super Gamer Boys videos and audio from the beginning. Almost four years now. You got to back um, those up somewhere. You got to put them like in a cloud or something. I know. If that drive ever dies, it's just right. Gone. That's everything. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so it, 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 it was a rough, rough start because I was... I was a very quiet, soft-spoken, awkward, you know, yeah. I, I was an adult, but I, I was a child. I, all in all, I was, I was a gonna child. Say, like, I was going to say, I was an adult, but I was very Are you childish. planning on like, changing this anytime soon? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. Dude, I have like changed and grown so much. Like, go back and list those episodes. If you when you hear me talk, you'll be like, oh my gosh, this Hi. is so cringe. This is so bad. Hi, I, I'm Garrett. Hi. Welcome yeah. to Super Game Boys. This is JJ. Hi. <laughs> oh, man. And then you're so, quiet for the rest of the episode. JJ's got to exactly. carry you. Oh, 100%. He, he carried me so hard. Um, but yeah, so that that, that, that was kind of like the inception, the beginning of it was just like, hey, let's see how it goes. You know, and at the beginning, it was like four downloads. One was JJ. <laughs> one was my parents. One was my grandma. And the other one was like, who you. knows who? Just some, yeah. Well, no, I I wouldn't download it because I I believe in not you know fluffing the numbers. So I'm like, I'm oh, not gonna download brother. my own show, <laughs> even at the beginning, even though it probably would have helped us. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to myself that, with the stats. Um, but uh, yeah, and then over time, it just uh, grew into what it is today, which is it's interesting, like how much of the show has kind of changed, um, going from like uh more of like introducing jj to stuff to then like we even were focused on more just entertainment in general like we were talking movies and tv shows a lot more we even had a segment called losing reviews one of our patreon producers matt lou back in the day um he has uh <laughs> he would suggest these terrible movies and then we had to go watch them and review them on the show so we did like mortal Kombat, we did uh con air we did uh, i beg like your all- pardon <laughs> <laughs> you said terrible movies in, in Mortal Kombat in the same sentence. Now, are you, are you talking about Armageddon? Armageddon is a real bad movie. Mortal Kombat? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't know. JJ, oh, okay. JJ's in the chat. He says he bought the PS4 from me. I don't remember that, but. Oh, I do remember it because I got a PS4 Pro. That's right. And I gave him my mm-hmm. old PS4. That's how it happened. Um, uh,. But yeah, I uh, it, it was interesting because yeah, going from like mostly an entertainment type show, like and just anything nerdy, anything, you know, that's even like the whole the nerdy. Oh, that's the the, the, the origin behind nerdy nudes. Uh, it was just total because I was awkward and stupid and couldn't talk right on a microphone. I meant to say nerdy news and totally said it wrong. JJ heard it and he's that he <laughs> ran it. with it. That's the so, name from the rest of, for for all of eternity. It will always be the nerdy nudes. Um, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so the show has obviously slowly progressed a lot over the years to where it is now, but it was last summer, June, right? Or no, is, uh, it, it wasn't June cause, cause, uh, cause you, cause we did E3 together. So it would have been before that, uh, it would have been May, May you came on board, right? Mm-hmm. Um, right before previous, E3. Yeah. Previously we had Zetch, Zetch was with us for about a year and then he, uh, you know, he had like eight soul. more kids and he rest and in then peace. left <laughs> them all behind when left he left this behind. mortal coil. <laughs> um, uh, and that was like in winter of 20 or like spring of 2021. You came in in summer of 2021. Um, but how I met Adrian was uh, it was very interesting, kind of totally it random. Was, yeah, I was gonna say, honestly, I we could have passed each other and yeah. just there's none of this would have ever happened. Like yeah. you, it was, we just happened <laughs> to sit down at the right table at the right place. Realistically. Uh, um, how, what is, uh, I, I'd, I'd be interested to hear your, your, your point of view from the story. Cause obviously I know mine and I've told on the show before. It was just like, yeah, I went to this so, kind of funny thing, but yeah, like what, what was it like? So for the, you? the way I remember it is it was, it was the kind of funny live event. I don't remember if it was two or three. I think it was two at this point. And they had all the extracurricular activities you could do during the week of the show, just to kind of like get the community to hang out together and kind of bond and, you know, find your clicks and all that kind of stuff. And one of them happened to be off the grid. 
which is over in San Francisco. It's a like a little area that's kind of shut off of the city where it has a bunch of different um, food trucks that you can go to and get whatever you want. They had all kind of different foods, you know, Korean barbecue, Southern food, Italian, whatever you were really looking for. They had something there. So in the middle of it, they have all these different picnic tables that you could sit at. And this is, oh no, it was, it was 2017 because the switch had just come out. Yes. And everybody who was sitting at a table was like all running Mario Kart tournaments and everybody yeah. had their switches. Cause out it was, it was the it. only multiplayer game <laughs> pretty much right at the time. <laughs> yeah. So I had sat down at a table and then, uh, I, you know, I forgot what, got us talking about something i think somebody said something you know about a game and then you perked up and then um i guess we just started getting to talking and then it got time to go to the actual kind of funny live event yeah. and you were like oh man i don't know i gotta walk down i don't know why you didn't have your car i think you said you parked it somewhere and just walked up so and i was like oh don't worry i'll drive us down there I had never been to San Francisco ever. I just moved to the Bay, or not the Bay, uh, to the, the Central Valley. I lived in Modesto before, which is about an hour and a half, two hours uh, to you know San Francisco. I'd taken my wife to the airport uh, at like three o'clock or 3.30 in the morning. So, which means I had to, yeah, so I left Modesto at 3.30, got her to the airport at like, you know, 5.30, 6 or whatever. And then, uh, I just didn't know the area at all. So I'm like, I'm not going to drive around because I don't know anything. I don't know San Francisco. So I literally parked it in a lot somewhere and walked everywhere. Like, so like at like, you know, six o'clock in the morning, I walked from there all the way over to uh, the pier. Uh, what is it? Um, pier 39. The, the pier 39. Like I walked all that way. <laughs> and then like I walked back back to like i was walking all over the place and finally when i, when I went to the, the food places i'm like i'm getting an uber which is it's funny like i ended up getting an uber with um ethan and his wife mm -hmm. or, uh or that was was that his name except that uber know. was my car no 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 no. i mean i i was i ubered to the event uh to sorry to the rest to the food places the food court right. i didn't realize that like we were in an uber together when we left that place then we rode with you but um yeah, right. It was, so it was it, it me. Was... So we were all getting ready to go to the event. We're like, oh, man, you know, because it was getting close to time. We thought we were going to be late. So I was like, well, I have my car. You know, if you guys want to come on, come on. And everybody piled into my car and you guys <laughs> were all crunched up in the back like this. Yeah. I had I had a tiny little my it's, it's a bigger car than I have now. I have a little Mustang now. So be grateful that you had that <laughs> car when I had it. It was a four Thunderbird. Everybody cramped into the back of it and we smashed down all the way to the venue. <laughs> and that like little trip right there kind of solidified everything. And we kind of stayed as a group for the yeah. rest of the event. And the rest, honestly, is kind of history. I mean, I, we, you know, we we kept tabs after that for a while. Yeah. And then finally, I saw that you had started your, uh, you know, started Super Gamer Boys. And then I would listen and I would argue in the shower while I was listening to it. And then I think <laughs> finally I just got up the nerve and I was like, when are you going to let me come on this show, dude? <laughs> and after that, the rest was history. Yeah. Yeah. It was like uh, I, we started Super Gamer Boys. And I remember that tweet being like, dude, like you got to let me come on. I, I got to <laughs> hash some things out or something. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had you on as a guest and oh, it was so much fun. And I'm like, man, yeah, it's, it's like crazy because. We'd never met each other, like didn't know each other, sat at a picnic table, talked. We literally hung out for an afternoon and we were just like virtual, like Twitter friends for like years, you know? And then like randomly one day to just be like, hey, yeah, right, come on my podcast. That'd right. be awesome. Totally. Like join me. And then I don't know. It's so bizarre. Like who would have thought like any of this would have happened? Because even after, at after all. the kind of, after the kind of funny event, like we could have just all went our own separate ways and like never talked again. But instead, nope. like everybody you know, got like, everybody's information. We all followed yeah. each other. You know what I'm saying? On, on, on Twitter and everything. And we're able to keep tabs. Yeah. Absolutely Thank wild. goodness we live in the time that we live in, because honestly, any earlier than that, we probably would have never seen each other again. 
Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. After that, like we all go home like, all right, well, we'll see you never, you know, right. <laughs> just move on. Yeah. I got your number. Don't, you know, don't move. Yeah. Or else you're going <laughs> to change it. <laughs> but, so yeah, that's kind of the story of, uh, super gamer boys. And then how Adrian at least came, came on with us and absolutely awesome. And here we uh, are killing here it. We are making some, some killer stuff for you guys um let's see uh next question here for, comes from shadow ranger 02 they ask in y'all's opinion is the original despicable me or mega mind better <laughs> now you asked me this or you told me this question when yes. we were doing this before the show and i said mega mind and i still stand by that hmm, i think nice. mega mind got somehow it got the the short end of the stick I don't know what it was, but nobody really got behind that movie and really pushed for it. Like, it was an interesting concept of a movie. Like, it, you know, exploring the dynamics of, of the good superhero, the villain relationship, and how a villain can, you know, try to self-rehabilitate. And, and I don't know. Just, it's a lot of dynamics that we don't normally get to see outside of, like, maybe the most niche of comic book runs for, you know, maybe the occasional marvel or dc character here and there that aren't superman or or spider-man or something like that despicable me i think is a more complete project i feel like it has a good story from start to end and it's when they're all when they're firing on all con creative uh cylinders i think it's the best of the three movies of course because the first one is always the best one unless you're shrek and <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think they're both really good, but I think Megamind, if you go back and watch it today, I think you'll think it's a better movie than mm. Despicable Me. Yeah, I I think I agree with you. I also, I think with uh, with Megamind too, it just like, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with everything you said, but then to add on to that too, even just like, like the, the type of humor that was in Mega Mind, I feel like it was like a little more mature. And like, mm -hmm. I always, like, I always like the, uh, some of the humor in like the, 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 the DreamWorks movies. Um, Cause it, it like, they're not afraid to just like do or say whatever kind of like where like Disney and uh, I mean, Illumination is, you know, with the minions sometimes pushes a line, but I don't know. DreamWorks That's what I was going like, to say oh, too. Okay. Like they just have like a good, like good baseline. I was going to say shout out to Despicable Me 1 because it is the most perfect balance of the minions that they have yeah. ever done. And after that first movie, it was just minions mania. But the minions in the first movie were used perfectly. They were a bit here and there, didn't last maybe more than 30 seconds, and it hits every time. Now... They got a whole movie of just gibberish for an hour and a half. And it's not in and, and the physical comedy is not even funny. But the first movie, perfect use of them. They weren't main characters. They were sidekicks and they were funny, but they could still help get stuff done when need to be. So, you know, of course, you know, when something's popular, you got to run it into the ground because money and toys. Oh, of course. Now, uh, 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 never mind. I was gonna make some joke about like with the new what? Mario, the new Mario movie being made by Illumination. Like they're gonna try to I, sneak some listen, minions in there. They're gonna sneak a minion. I in was Mario? gonna say, you better <laughs> believe there are gonna be minions in that Mario movie. You better <laughs> believe it. There's either gonna be minions or there's gonna be rabbits. One of those two is gonna be in that movie. I guarantee it. Oh, there has to be rabbits. I guarantee dude. it, dude. I mean, I'll, I'm going to save it for the end of the show during what you're playing, but I've been playing Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and oh my god, It's gosh, fantastic. I it's love fantastic. it so much. <laughs> oh, I, I played it before already, and I'm like, I, I never finished it, so I was like, I need to jump back in, and let me tell you, on the Switch OLED, I, I, I need to stop talking about it. I'll talk about it later. It looks gorgeous. It's like the perfect game for Switch OLED. Like, the colors just pop. Oh, it's so good. Woo! Um, but yes, Mega Mind is better. Despicable Me is up there. It is. It it's a it's bad great. Movie, but like Mega Mind, I think barely edges it out. Granted, I haven't seen Mega Mind in a long time. I would be interested to kind of rewatch that. I was gonna say definitely go back. It's really worth the rewatch. But but yeah, but even one that what I remember, I remember it being great too. So, um, 
This next question comes from Micah Jr. and he asks, what is the best, what is the best wearable candy? <laughs> now, I'm glad that we, we hashed this out before we, uh, Cause we answer this question answer. live we on air. Had, yeah. yeah. Cause I definitely thought it was another kind of wearable edible garment. Um, <laughs> so his example is, uh, uh, ring pops, smarty bracelets, that type of thing, you know, right. The PG like, like, versions, of like things. the ones you find at the, at, in the Wegmans, like cash register checkout, you know, gotcha, the, the, gotcha. that, that type of thing. Not like, um, <laughs> I guess it would have to be ring pop. There's not too much stuff that you can wear and eat. Yeah, I'm trying to even think. Like, hang on, where? Oh, this is gonna. <laughs> I don't try to Google this. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> what if the, the does it count if the thing allows you to consume something? Because what about the glasses? You know what I'm talking about the the glasses that are the straw, and when you sip on it, it goes. Oh, sh- 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 those are. But but you're not actually eating the straw, right? You're, you're not. Just, no, but it, it's an apparatus that you wear and you consume things with it so i don't know if that kind of bends the rules a little bit but i think that would be up there uh i i googled wearable candies oh i'm Uh, sorry i'm sorry (laughs) i got i got this so there's a smarties candy necklace there's ring pops there's a candy g-string uh of course there's a um more ring pops more ring pops more ring candy handcuffs um, I'm gonna put that in the, uh, you know, <laughs> dark web searches too. Uh, more ring pops. The after hour searches. Uh, more ring pops. Basically, ring pops is the. So I don't know what other. An- oh, I. I, take I think back. ring there, pop. There, there, what? there is the necklaces and the bracelets you can get too. Yeah, but those but, are smarties as well. But I, I think yeah. ring pop takes this by default. Yeah, I think I have to agree. Ring pop is probably, probably the best. I don't know, but there's something about like those kind of Smarties, like that chalky flavor. Smarties on their know. own are good in the little pack, but I don't know about I, just wearing them after a while, and, and your skin and your skin oils and and sweat gets <laughs> is, all over them, and gross. then it's just it is a little yeah. gross. Yeah, at least Ring Pop is on that plastic little ring, so you don't actually get it on your fingers. So I right. I don't know. I yeah, I think Ring Pop got it. <laughs> yeah, give it give it to Ring Pop. You know. Oh, what, what candy that makes it? It's not a wearable, but it ring pop is so closely in my mind tied to this is baby bottle pops. Baby, I knew you were gonna say <laughs> baby bottle, baby bottle pops. pops, baby bottle pops. Doop, 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 doop. Used to uh, flood so that good. little chamber. <laughs> or no, the baby bottle pops. You it was the thing of powder, and you which put one it am I thinking of? It. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but it's not baby, baby bottle pops. Is like uh, you unscrewed the top. It looked like a ring pop. I thought that was a different type of it. And no? you stuck it in the sugar, and then you shook it. Sh- and I know that one. I could have swore with... that was like a variation uh, of it. No, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I missed out. Maybe, but you know the one I'm talking. It, it looks like a ring pop, right? It has the kind of same candy, but it has a little chamber in it, and then it comes with a little bottle like sugar juice or whatever it is, and you candy. can you can squeeze yeah. it and drip it into the little chamber in the candy, and then you can just eat it all together like that. I know you know what I'm talking about. No, no, no. I know. I'm just trying. I don't know the name. I'm, I'm, I'm searching furiously because I, I, I need to know. My mind's like, what is it? What is it? What is it? Uh, it's uh, like a juice. Oh, my God. Juice candy, right? No. Ju- uh, juicy, juicy drop juicy pop. Juicy drop pop. It's made there by we Tops. go. That's funny. Wait, the Tops as in like the company that makes like trading cards? Maybe. Is that, is that who made this? Game? That's so I random. think it's because they're both pop. Maybe that's why I thought they were in the same family. Because okay. they're made by the same people, right? Oh, uh, yes. And the same company also makes push pops. Like the ice cream? No, like the plastic tube, and it would spring load up, and then you'd suck oh, on it. Oh, like, yeah. It looked like a lipstick, a tube of lipstick or something that's like that. That's right. And, you, and yeah. they had the cap on it so you could save it for later. Oh, man, you blow my that's a core memory you just unlocked right there. <laughs> so the, the the push pops, juicy drop pops, and baby bottle pops, all made by the by tops apparently. No company, wonder I associate the all of brings, them together. They the had a racket. They had football. a they had a legendary run with candy, man. So good. 
Apparently, and you can still buy them too, by the way. I can get them at Walgreens right now for $1.99. Uh, um, they make I know another. Where I'm going after this. <laughs> they make another candy called Juicy Drop Gummies. It's the same idea as a Juicy Drop Pop, but it's like these gummies. And it comes with a syringe with the juice that you drop on the gummies. <laughs> That's, uh, I, I think I'll just take the pop. Thank you very yeah, much. I appreciate the, the your creativity. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, oh, I'm so glad you you were able to find the name of that. As soon as you said juicy, it popped right in. <laughs> I I was like, it, it would have drove me nuts if I didn't. Um, let's see. We have uh, one last question here. I think on the notes, Sir Prince a lot ask. Went to the Omaha Zoo last weekend and had a blast. The rhinos seem to remember JJ. Uh, see the Discord for evidence. He, he did post should. a video of him. He posted a video of him yelling at the rhinos like, hey, you remember JJ? And literally when he says it, the rhino like looks startled and turns around. And he's like, oh, still scared. <laughs> oh, God, <huh?"> not him <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, like the rhino has like PTSD or something. Uh, but anyways, his question is, what's your favorite attractions when you go to the zoo? So what's the one attraction slash animal slash exhibit slash whatever that you have to go to in you go to a zoo? <laughs> the aquarium. Oh, I, yeah. I really appreciate a really nice, like, well thought out aquarium. Um, now, you're you're really close to the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Have you been? I, like when I was really young, but I haven't okay. been in a long time. Dude, when, uh, when we lived in Modesto, we we got the passes the one year, and we went all the time. It's mm -hmm. so it's, incredible. I from what I it. remember, yeah, it was really nice. Um, one that I really appreciate is at the um, oh, what is it called? Come on, brain. I keep wanting to say oh, the Academy of uh, the Academy of Sciences over in San Francisco. Hmm. Let me see. Let me let me make sure I have it right. Yeah. Because I believe, yeah, the Academy of Sciences, they have a really, really nice aquatic exhibit and area uh, that they have put together over there. So I definitely would hmm. recommend doing that. They even have like snorkeling, not necessarily for people, but like they have divers that go down there and you can watch them do their thing. It's really well done. But I really, I'm a big fan of the Academy of Science in, in general. I think it's, a must see i think it's way better than the exploratorium and i love the exploratorium so definitely worth the visit and Dang. for us older folk <laughs> once every couple weeks they have um or i think it's either once a month or once every couple weeks they have a after hours kind of thing where you can visit and it's 21 and up and you can get like drinks and walk around the museum oh, at after hours oh, that's at night cool yeah and they have like a DJ and everything and it, it rules. That's really cool. Dang. <laughs> I missed out. I might need to come visit you just to go to that. <laughs> I'm down. Um for me, I I don't know. Like I I've always really liked uh the elephants. Like it's like especially now being at the San Diego Zoo, we have passes for that, so we go all the time. Um because it's like 20 minutes from our house. It's super nice. <laughs> uh the the elephant exhibit there is so cool and like they're always so active they have like the chambers where like you can even watch where they like, will feed them and bathe them and all that stuff and like uh -huh. their medicine and vitamins and it's like ah, i don't know i love that um i think my second favorite is the lions um and again i think again it, it's it's that's gone up in rank especially because the san diego zoo because the way their lion exhibit is you're like right up against this net essentially like it's just like i don't know what it's made out of because it just looks like a net but that's the wall between you and the line exhibit oh basically. no no um, no no <laughs> i i'm sure there's something like it's it's might be some like metal wire and cage and stuff built into it but it's it better it, i was gonna say it better be like jurassic park when, when they like, turn when those fences it, on <laughs> <laughs> it's electrified when you look uh, at it, it just looks like like a black mesh net but i'm like it has to be kevlar or something anything. or something That's carbon in there but the the last time we were there um it was like usually they're just laying up in the rock and sleeping but the last or the last few times we've been there it's been very active and uh like man the last time it roared so loud Oh man, that just sends chills right down your spine. Like when it's just like I've, I've heard that they can roar like 
if you're close enough, you can feel it in your chest. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, you, you you hear it echo, and it just yeah, like you feel it. Like it feels like you're laying on top of a subwoofer or something. Like a like pressure, like, yeah. Like it's so deep, and it's so just terrifying sounding. Like my mind instantly goes to like imagine being out at night in the jungle and you hear that like that's the sound of death you hear that you get one shot and you better dead. not miss you <laughs> yeah, better right? not miss oh man like it, it 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 brought a whole new meaning to like oh what was that movie there's a movie it's an older movie and it's supposedly like it's like based off a true story isn't it or like at least inspired by a true story like in in india or something oh i was gonna it? say we bought a zoo but i guess not no <laughs> we bought a zoo india or Africa. I don't know. You talking about that, that life of pie? No. The one with the tiger? Not. No, 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 no. This is one where I think it's lions. Uh what's the plot? What what's going on in it? I, honestly, I I watched this so long ago, I can barely <laughs> remember. I just remember it, it, it's mostly at night, and there's just a bunch of lions like hunting down these people, and the people just getting like ferociously just torn apart basically by these lions. Oh well. And it's like it, but like that movie is like people would say how terrifying and scary and i'd watch them like ah, that's not that scary i think it took place in africa uh it wasn't scary it. until today yeah when you and realize I, what could happen <laughs> and then i i listened to this roar in real life and i'm like oh like, now i get i would it. like that would make like that, that that makes so much more sense now i get it now. <laughs> oh man crazy um so yeah definitely check out the lions at any zoo but especially the san diego zoo and what we found out is that you go later in the day like at night so if you go like early in the morning or even during the day like, lazy. like I said, they, they, they tend to sleep lazy. a lot but then it hit us the last time we were there we went like super late like it was like right before close like six or seven o'clock and all the cats were active like the cheetahs the leopards everything and, I, and it hit me i'm like oh time to hunt. Most, of, most of them are nocturnal like of course they're up hunting and ready to go i'm like this is a time to come the <laughs> cheetahs were going wild the leopards are running around i'm like this is awesome like always come at night if you want to see the big cats we got all <laughs> our energy from sleeping we're hungry let's do this yeah, yeah. <sighs> we should probably actually get into the nerdy nudes here huh I guess so. All right. Well, let me give you. Let me let me pick up the slack again this week. Here we go. <laughs> it's now time for the nerdy nudes. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Um. So, this first news story comes to us from uh, Chris Pierre over at GameStop. Game to uh, GameSpot. <laughs> Gotta say that right. Uh, because one's a great company. Other, they're not getting any company. shine today. No, thank you. Uh, God of War Ragnarok release date confirmed for November and a new trailer revealed. Uh, so we finally know when God of War Ragnarok is coming out. Sony today confirmed Ragnarok's release date on PS4 and PS5 as November 9th, 2022, making good on the repeated assurance reassurances that it would be available this year. The long awaited date was announced as part of a short new CG trailer, which you can watch below. It shows Kratos, Kratos and Atreus squaring off against various foes in talking about not being alone before squaring off against what appears to be Fenrir. Uh, the giant alongs- wolf. Yes. <clears throat> Alongside the news, Sony also revealed that God of War Ragnarok pre-orders will go live on July 15th uh, and showcase some of the special editions that will be available. Pre-ordering any edition will get you a set of snow-themed items for Kratos and Atreus to wear. Um, there's not much more to this story other than these uh there's a do you have your wallet ready oh my wallet is ready 100 (laughs) percent uh so i think there's four different editions there's standard digital deluxe collectors and jotnar digital deluxe is exactly that's digital and just gets you some extra bonus items in game but the collectors and the jotnar editions are both like physical box boxes huge boxes um and they come with different things but dude i you gotta go for the Jotnar, dude. I, There's I no need question. To get that Jotnar edition. So the Jotnar, I, I, I don't, I, I thought it was on this news story, but it's not. But it comes with like handmade, uh, like dice, like metal dice. Uh, it comes the figurines. With, here's, a, here's a picture here. It comes with a, um, a replica of uh, Molinier. 
16 Insane. inch Insane. so like a big dog like <laughs> right. Hammer, it comes with a, a seven inch vinyl record of the soundtrack uh, comes with a steelbook display case. It doesn't come with a physical copy of the game. It comes with a digital code, which is fine. Good, it's 2022. I don't, have, I don't yeah. You have I don't a real have PlayStation this, 5, so. Yeah, I, I don't have the disc drive. Um, it comes in the collector's box, which is made to look like the knowledge keepers, um, like the the cabinets that you see in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with two wooden figurine, car, like hand carved, like wooden figurines. It comes with a, a ring. It comes with a map, a cloth map of like the world's these awesome metal pins like oh man i need so to much I stuff i don't know how much it's gonna be it doesn't matter it does like, this is what you bought it for this is what you yeah. bought your unit for and that's that's what i was kind of like telling adrian before the show i was like i literally I, I was originally holding off to buy ps5 because i wanted a god of war ragnarok special edition ps5 and they didn't announce it so it's like i'm glad i didn't wait because i wouldn't have, you wouldn't have got one. one but i got a so i got a base ps5 digital edition and i was like okay here's my chance to to make good on my promise i wasn't able to get the ps5 but i i'm gonna try i i want to try to get that you our edition um push within reason we'll i'll see. send you we'll whatever what alert i can find listen <laughs> this is the big if you don't buy any more collector's editions this is the one to get yeah that you're probably for, right. for the ps5 generation you're probably right until Death Stranding 2 comes out. <laughs> I doubt that'll be PS5. <laughs> well, um, you know what? I guess they're already working on it, so maybe it could be. Could be, could be. Because of Big Mouth Mads Mikkelsen. <laughs> um, so yeah, July 15th, 7 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, man, that's like when I... I usually don't wake up till 7. I'm about to wake up early. Nope, nope. Oh, you got to be up. You got to yeah. be up and alert. I'm definitely setting an alarm for Friday. That's this Friday, 7 a.m., Oh man, yeah, I'm stoked. I'm so excited. It looks like, I mean, the collector's edition looks so good, and I'm just stoked to finally play this game. I'm glad it's actually coming out this year and not getting delayed again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, congrats to to Sony Santa Monica on being yes. able to make it out this year. I congrats. hope and pray that there was no crunch needed to to meet this deadline, especially because they had pushed it back a couple times already. I feel like yeah. that should have given them the extra time to figure things out. Um, and I'd also like to um, give a good, a big good shove it to everybody who harassed anybody who was a member of the team. Uh, you don't deserve this. This was not a result of your badgering them and harassing them that this date came out. They probably already had it planned to let everybody know the date on whatever day that it was announced. And you probably actually took the wind out of their sails for them showing you and giving you this date and trailer and everything. So good job. You did it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 like, like we were talking about before, is it's like, I, it's such a bu bummer that it happened this way. Cause it's like, yeah, if they could have just waited, they would have gotten the date. But instead, like, they had to, like, why? Why are people so just gross and disgusting and just twisted? Humans. Like just, 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 just chill out, right? Just hang, just, 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 just relax. If you can wait, if you could wait a week, you can get the date. And PS Plus Extra do. just came out. There is so yeah. much stuff you could go play right <laughs> now. Go relax. Play everything. Oh man. Um, November will be here before you know it. It would have been here before you knew it, with or without this announcement. Re right. <sighs> I, I mean, don't know. People sometimes, there, man. There is a little. I I feel like there's a little bit of like a a drought with new games right now. Fine, that's fine with me. So 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 I mean, I I understand where some people could come from, like just wanting the date in hopes that it would be earlier. But whether they got the date now, last week, or next week, like it doesn't change the fact that it's coming out in November. So it's like, yeah, that doesn't make sense to be <laughs> be as wild as they were. But they could stop bringing out games for like two years. And yeah, I, I mean, might maybe be able to do to make a decent like dent in my backlog. Oh man, ridiculous! It is ridiculous. I'm glad the Steam sale, summer sale, is finally over. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yeah, I know. Only like three more months until the winter one starts. Oh, no. no. <laughs> uh, all right. This next story comes to us from Forbes, written by Paul Tassi. They write. 
GameStop fires Game Informer staff as it doubles down on NFTs and the blockchain. Absolutely wild headline uh, and awful decisions. Awful news this week that came out. Uh, GameStop has started another large round of layoffs yesterday, which included its own CFO being fired with reports of upward of 150 employees being let go, including key staff at Game Informer. The, the the magazine website, which has already been the target of cuts before this. All of this is in the service of GameStop's new plan to invest big into increasingly unstable space, Web3, the blockchain, and NFTs. The blockchain was the main focus of a leaked internal memo sent out by CEO Matt Furlong. This is his quote here. Change will be a constant as we evolve our commerce business and launch new products through our blockchain group. These changes will enable us to operate in a profitable manner as we execute against our strategy of pursuing sales growth in our commerce business and launching new products that empower customers within the digital asset and Web3 gaming verticals. <clears throat> Whatever any of that means. Right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. We want money. Yeah. GameStop has launched its own crypto wallet and is planning to launch an NFT marketplace just as NFT trading volume has fallen by around 90% in recent <laughs> months. <laughs> GameStop, always late to the party. Way oh, to go. Oh, brother. Bunch of boneheads. According like to some report. Oh, forget it. Yeah, GameStop seems to be seems to think the same kind of people who made a meme stock, uh, made it a meme stock, will go big on the Web3 concept, though all this seems very divorced from what used to be the core concept of the company, a store that sells video games with value-added assets like an enthusiast magazine. It also seems a bit like diving headfirst into a pool that is just been almost entirely drained of water <laughs> the tweets from game informer staff have been pretty heartbreaking to see over the course of the past day as their jobs are sacrificed in pursuit of this nebulous blockchain dream uh there, yeah there's a tweet here from alex stadnick uh who wrote game informer show canceled for the week i have no effing words uh so it, it goes on a little bit more but basically what happened is they're like hey we are so high on this NFT thing, which is old news now. Like no one. We believe in this so much. We don't uh, even need people to run it anymore. Get out. Yeah, they they fired like yeah, 150 employees, including their own CFO. Um, it's tragic. It's so sad. Like it's. It was blindsided. Nobody knew it was coming, right? No one knew it. Yeah, they. From what I understand, like people came into work and then they're like, "Hey." We're letting you go because, you know, them, NFTs, them, man. Uh, Web, those, we got those, those, those little funny little, those funny little monkey JPEGs <laughs> got to make us lots of money. Um, uh, what was that? That Matt Damon commercial? Was that him? Oh, yes. Crypto.com or whatever. Yeah. Oh, what did he say? Um, the people who are, what is it? The courageous to, to make change. What was that phrase that they used? Uh, it's something like uh, the bold and crazy. Nothing ventured, know, nothing like, gained. Or yeah, something like yeah. something like that. So stupid. yeah, that's why well, we're firing you, bro. Sorry. Or fortune yeah. favors the brave. That's why we're firing you. There you go. Fortune favors the brave. Yeah, we'll see. We'll <sighs> see about that. But yeah, I imagine that coming into work one day and being like, "Oh, sorry, you don't have a job. You're being replaced by a JPEG." Um, you can collect your Dogecoin it's, at the door. Yeah, Matt. Oh, imagine that. that'd be salt in the wound. Like uh, your your next paycheck is in Dogecoin. Oh or my something. god. Uh, um, I don't. I yeah. I don't really have much more words to say other than I. I honestly, I've I felt dirty. Like I just bought my Switch OLED a few weeks ago from GameStop, and I'm like, wow, I supported this trash company. Like I actually felt like sick thinking about that. Like I traded in a bunch of. You games, had no idea they were going to do Switch. that, though. No, I didn't. But it's just like, man, like I already knew they weren't great. Like they've been kind of scummy for years now. But like that, that's a new low. Or is I don't know. I know every company is 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 dirty, but GameStop has has been. In the last few years, they've been ripping like, people off for years exponentially, just like nosediving. I feel like, and now it's they, like, like that, that might be the final nail in the coffin. Like, okay, no, I'm just strictly buying things either, you know, from from either local retailers, like there are local game shops around here I could go to, or mm. whatever digitally, like straight they've, from the source. <laughs> they've always been slimy though, for the longest time. Like, just knowing that the value of the stuff that you trade in 
is not nearly what it should be. I, I can't stand when, when people talk about that and they go, well, they have to make a profit too. They, they can, and they can still also offer you a decent, you know, return on your, your trades, especially if yeah. they're in you, the condition should, should take account in that, that too. If you take care of oh, your yeah. stuff, you should get more money back, but I don't know. No. Um, I honestly don't care if GameStop sees this. I would not want to work with them in the future. I don't know how you feel, but no, I'm good. I don't, I don't yeah. need their, their no money. Thanks. I don't need their influence. I don't need their, Hey, we can get you in here. I'm cool. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Don't want anything to do with them. I think I might be uh, pretty close to done. I have like a GameStop membership and it's about to expire and I, it's on the set to auto renew. Cause, yep. cause that's, cause that's like how, like when I trade stuff in, I always got like, you know, extra and I got discounts on things. But yeah, after this, I'm like, Oh no, I'm going to let that lapse. That's good. I'm done. No more. Yep. I mean, I love the Game Informer, but I mean, if they're they, they're, basically, yeah. they're basically shuttering that at this point, like they're uh, yeah. they're working towards just shutting it down. It's like okay, no. Sorry, I can get guys. Game Informer <laughs> another way. You can just you can just I think you could just buy a subscription outright. That's true. Yeah, so. you can just just get that. But craziness, sad, sad yeah. situation over there. Our so. condolences to anybody who's you know lost their job because of yeah. this at Game Informer or or GameStop proper, the C CFO. Um, I mean, you were probably a slime ball because you were an executive, but still, you probably didn't see it coming either. Uh, but mostly the Game Informer team. So I'm pretty sure most of them are going to land on their feet if they want to stay in the games industry. There's a lot of people and there's a lot of jobs out here. So wishing them all the best. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully uh, they can land on their feet. Like like you said, there's definitely a lot of opportunities. So yeah, hopefully uh, they can get linked up and keep right on working because there's some solid people who yeah, just lost their job crazy all right this last new story comes from gamesindustry.biz written by just written by the games industry staff it says just a bunch of people everyone we'll take it uh, i guess <laughs> um that's funny yeah usually i like to credit who wrote it but no idea uh pax organizer read pop to run e3 2023 the entertainment software association announced today which is uh, ETH, the company that kind of runs and owns E3, the E3 2023 will be organized in partnership with ReadPop. The latter is the company behind PAX, EGX, Star Wars Celebration, New York Comic Con, and other events, as well as the owner of several leading games media brands, including GamesIndustry.biz. Inter uh, interesting. Okay, I didn't realize that. that uh, mm -hmm. they, own the, they own the site. Together, the two organizations will host E3 2023 in its traditional home at the Los Angeles Convention Center during the second week of June. The event will encompass both digital showcase and in-person components that will also be open to consumers. Media registration, which has been streamlined and given added security following previous year's leaks, will open later in the year. More information on confirmed exhibitors and event schedules, as well as hotels and travel guides, will also be shared in the months to come. Uh, we're thrilled to bring back E3 as an in-person event with Reed Pop, a global leader in producing pop culture events, said the ESA president and CEO Stanley Pierre-Lewis. The past three years have confirmed that E3 convenes our industry like no other event. Reed Pop brings world-class talent and a keen Ooh, understanding of the Jeff video Keely. games. Yeah, right. <laughs> understanding of the video games industry, which will serve to enhance the E3 experience for years to come. Uh, yeah, so this was kind of a shock because i think we even talked about it like a month ago like is e3 dead like they had talked about they had no plans coming back this year and the future was shaky and so it's interesting in just a month they've gone from saying we don't know if we're coming back next year to oh we're coming back and <laughs> it's being run it's gonna by. be better than ever yeah better than ever now uh, i i am excited though PAX, from what I understand, is a pretty fantastic event. Like, That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, I've never heard anything bad about a PAX show as far as the organization and uh, the way that, you know, the security is run and the way that the lines are, are managed or anything like that or scheduling. They seem to be on top of it. So if they are the ones that can handle, if anybody can handle it, I think it'd be them. Yeah, I... I, I hope because right before COVID, they started making the turn to try to make it more like consumer friendly or whatever. Not so much, not so focused on the media aspect. And yeah, I, this is kind of has me excited to be like, OK, maybe because I remember that 
they they did an E3 with a quote unquote consumer focus, and it it was just horrendous a nightmare i heard like i guess like lines were horrible to get into things like the security was hard to get into like the industry people couldn't do their jobs and yeah industry people couldn't get to where they need to get and so it's like oh man pax has been doing this for a long time and there's their thing has always been that mix with you know an influence or a, 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 a a leaning towards the consumer side so it's like they already have the know-how on how to organize these events make them run smoothly man, I wonder if this next E3 could just, like, drop a bomb and, like, reignite this E3 mania that, you know, used to be around. Like, that was a thing. Like, everyone mm-hmm. looked forward to E3 each year, and it died off. And, and Keelio had to bend years. the knee. Yeah, right? <laughs> now, yeah, I'm kind of curious. Like, I, I mean, as far as we understand, like, Keely has no intentions of backing down with Summer Game Fest. Um, After that last this... one, I would, I would maybe take a phone call, if I were him, at least. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was just going to ask. Like, do you think there's any chance either he does back down or at least dials it back a little bit, focuses it, maybe like focuses it a little more? Like, what do you I, think he could possibly do to keep going? Like, how does that I, work with E3? I feel like Summer Game Fest was a good alternative when we didn't have anything else. I think people will remember Summer Game Fest as that because it started at the, you know, at the time when we didn't have anything and, and Jeff stepped in and, and made that happen. Um, I don't, I know that he has his contention with the ESA. He's not very uh, cordial with them. Yeah. So that would be the big kicker of him actually being like, Nope, I'm not doing any three. I'm not, I don't want anything to do with the three because of his um, being at odds with, with them. That's the only thing I can think of that would make him want to continue with Summer Game Fest if E3 was starting back up. Hmm. So, yeah, um, I don't know. It'll be interesting. <laughs> but here's my question to to end yes. this to end this topic: How are you and I and JJ gonna scheme our way in there? I don't want to oh. go as a, I don't want to go as a guest. I want to no, go no, as no. a as a member of the media. You get me. No, yeah, I, I mean, I, I noticed that in the article here, um, where it says that because we're games media, whether people like it or not. Yeah, it says media registration will open later in the year. I assume this year. So, I don't know. I need to, uh, I need to keep my eye open and figure that out because I've always, I, my entire life, I've wanted to go to an E three. Absolutely. Imagine the first one you go to is through the thing you started. What 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 kind of feeling be, would that be? It would be not only do you not have to go amazing. as a guest, but people expect you to be there and to play their. St- oh man, forget it about would be it, sick. dude. It would be sick. So I uh, need to set some uh, like alerts and you know stuff on my phone on my calendar. So I keep checking that, keep up with that. There is an email here. It says for business inquiries, you can email. Now you got to figure out a way to make us look way bigger than we are i know that's 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 what's going through my head is like okay like how do i how do i write an email again that sounds you can put our total how number do I, of yeah. downloads ever <laughs> you can put all our video streams put them together you can put yeah. that we've been in contact with panic before i can all, i can direct you know what I'm saying? To, leverage yeah. it leverage it i can direct them to your your initial uh play date react that has right like tell them 15, we're followed by, by we're followed by pop agenda staff you know what i mean yeah, we can yeah. we can we can finesse this we can do we, it we can direct into our xbox showcase from last year that has like over three thousand views on right it's like hey we're somebody we're not exactly huge, we're someone we're not, <laughs> we're not gigantic but we got we, we get our numbers when we need them don't look we at our do other this. don't look at our other episodes that have like five views or something like that but we you know. can do this <laughs> Our, our, our podcast is generally better than our YouTube at this point, but <laughs> but yeah, no, I, uh, I, I we, we got to get in there, whatever it takes. Across our entire streaming history, we have thousands of downloads and listens. <laughs> See what I'm saying? You can make it work. I mean, if we were still on PodCoin, that would be true. I, like every episode on PodCoin, we were getting like 10,000 listens per episode. It was That's awesome. what I'm talking about. Leverage that. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Say, uh, you know, throughout our history, we, we've had tens of thousands of listens. <laughs> we've had thousands of views on YouTube. We can we can make it. We can embellish it. I'm telling you. <laughs> Put a little sprinkle, a little sauce on it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, that is it for the news this week. Now. It is time for our Patreon ad. (laughs) 
This is the part of the show where I tell you to go over to patreon.com slash supergamerboys and support us over there, starting at just a buck a month. And uh, like I mentioned earlier in the show, that's what helps us keep the lights on, buy new equipment, buy games, whatever we got to do to just generally keep the show going and ultimately make it better for you guys make more content and make it better we're all about the quality over here if you want to help in that pursuit head over to that patreon.com slash super gamer boys starting at just a buck a month you get episodes early and ad free just like this show if you're not watching it live you could be listening right after the show right when we finish up i edit it as quick as i can get it out there on the patreon feed you can listen to it this very night um, while everyone else has to wait till Wednesday morning to listen and watch over on YouTube. So that's a perk. You get it, the show notes early. You can see what we're going to be talking about at the time. Leave your own questions, comments, concerns right on the docs for, for us to see. Um, yeah, you can get the shout outs in the show if you're a Super Gamer sponsor and above. Heck, you could be a Super Gamer producer and pitch segments. If you want us to do a cool segment earlier in the show, I was talking about uh, Matt Lou back in the day with losing reviews, making us watch bad movies you could uh join us at the the patreon producer tier pitch us segment you know and we we, we generally give it the old college try we will give it a shot they don't all you know <clears throat> they don't all hit perfectly but uh we have fun with it and uh yeah so go over support us on patreon and uh check out the, the those perks you can also support us here on twitch if you happen to be watching live you can go to twitch.tv slash the super gamer boys and or yes that's what it is twitch.tv slash the super gamer boys subscribe with your uh i'm gonna get this right prime gaming that's what it is if you have amazon prime you can attach your amazon account to your twitch account with get prime gaming you get one free sub a month and we would appreciate if you sent that sub our way that's five bucks for us and it doesn't cost you anything zero dollars for you five bucks for us take that money from jeff bezos he doesn't need it you know he's just out buying yachts and spaceships and stuff i don't know um isn't he trying to compete with jeff uh or spacex or something like that doesn't he have his own space thing now jeff bezos i honestly couldn't tell you i, I think I, he does <laughs> jeff i don't know what bezos those people are up to these days space um i don't know oh, oh yeah blue origins it's called blue origins cool so everyone just has their own space shuttle now except for us one day we might. We'll call it. Yeah, they have their own space shuttle. I'm trying to figure out how I can pay for my gas this week. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds oh, fun. Man. So, yeah, support us on Twitch so Adrian can pay for gas. Let's make this a full-time gig so we can actually pay for our gas with it. That would be <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Thank you all so much for listening to this ad. Now let's get back to the show. All right, Adrian, it's that time of the show where I ask you what you're playing. You're going to be pretty proud of me this week. I did not mm. only play Animal Crossing, but I did play Animal Crossing. However, I played a new game that I had been putting off because I was like, eh, I don't know how I feel about this, even though it's two things that I really like put together. Uh, so I started Dragon Quest Builders um on okay. vita this week and for the uninitiated it's exactly what it sounds like it is a dragon quest game and a building game aka minecraft smashed together to make one game now the reason i was really hesitant about this in the first place was because i felt like it was just a cash grab but i actually sat down and i gave it a fair shake and it really does feel like both of those games put together. It feels like it's really well thought out as far as the construction and the materials and, and the gameplay itself. But mm. at the same time, it has a ton of elements of Dragon Quest in the series and like Hallmark stuff like that throughout it. It definitely has the DNA of, of a Dragon Quest game and it even has its own plot. Huh. Um, so I'm not very terribly far into it, but I'm actually liking what I'm seeing so far. So I'm yeah. looking to see, you know, to go forward with it and see, uh, what the story, uh, holds for me. So that's my big so, thing this yeah. week. 
so so that's on Vita. It, now is it on other consoles? I feel like yeah. I've seen it on other things as well. Like it's Switch it's on stuff, everything, right? but I just happen to have it on Vita. I think I got it on okay. sale real cheap one time, and just never got around to playing it. And I like the fact that it's mobile too. But it's like it's it's there's already a second one either coming out or it's already out. So this is pretty old. You can find it for cheap. Interesting. Yeah, I I I think I've mentioned this before. Like I've never played any of the Dragon Quest games, the, both the mainline series or Builders. But it's like something that always sounds interesting. But like when you hear the like, because I think what in the mainline it's like Dragon Quest eleven or something or ten. It's like what there's like a, ten other games. Like it's like Final Fantasy that, that though, where you like don't so you don't have to but... play any of them in order. Okay. You can just That's... you can you can honestly do like this. And just put, have one through ten or one through nine because we didn't get ten here, or one through eleven without ten. You know what I mean? And just pick <laughs> yeah. one, and then you can just play it. Now, do do they have like connecting stories, or is it really, or in the characters, or is it really actually like Final Fantasy where they are completely like disjointed? It's 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 more disjointed than than Final Fantasy. Okay. Like every every game is its own. I mean, there's callbacks and there's hallmarks, you know, to different stuff. Like, um, in one game, you're a descendant of another character in a game before that, but like, that's where it stops is you're able to go visit the grave of your ancestor from the, from, from the game before, but that's like, as far as it goes. Interesting. Yeah. I just always, yeah, you, you, I, I see the number. I'm like, that's too many games. <laughs> like, I don't no, know. That just means do, that there's but, more for, for you to pick from. Yeah. And there's a different flavor of game. You know, there's everyone has a different cast, a different story, you know, and then especially because they're getting ready to do the uh, HD 2D remakes of the older games and they're oh, yeah. starting with three. So that might be a good place for you to start because yeah, that style like is that. gorgeous. I like that art style a lot. Mm hmm. Um, now I need to kind of time out real quick on the podcast. Uh, where I, I just happen to look over at chat here. And I'm seeing some slander from Angel um, saying that he's calling me out for not liking pineapple on pizza. And I just want to say, as he sir, should, pineapple does not belong on pizza. I know. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I upset. thought he said that you liked pineapple on pizza. No, he says he doesn't like he as in Garrett doesn't like pineapple on pizza. Correct. I do not. Pineapple does not belong on pizza. No, it doesn't. I'm with you. Okay. Yes, good. Okay. I'm sorry. Angel, I misunderstood the situation. Angel no, thinks they're... I'm wild for both thinking that. And I just had to say. Who... Like, I gotta... Listen. Stop. That's, pizza. That's, that's hold on. Saying. Hold on. Hold on. Put, put the show on Pizza hold. is all... good. Pizza, pizza is, good. is good. Pineapples are good. Pineapples on pizza, it's not good. You want a, you want a good combination? Bacon ranch. Bacon ranch Ooh. is amazing. Because bacon oh. is good. And ranch is good. You know, and this, somehow they work this combo, together. This combo we accidentally stumbled upon a few weeks ago, uh, a couple months ago now, me and a buddy uh, and Toby, our old Patreon producer, um, we ordered from Papa John's and we got bacon and tomato. Okay. Like uh, chunks of fresh tomato. The and BT. that was really good. Like Where's I was surprised. I didn't. I don't hear any greens. No. Yeah. 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 It wasn't. It wasn't like a BLT. No greens or nothing like that. But I. I didn't think it was going to be as good as it was. But like the like zestiness, the acidity, the, the acidity from the from the tomato works so well with the bacon. I was like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> like it's so basic. It was literally just cheese, bacon, and tomato. I'm like, I'm all. And about wouldn't this. you know it? No pineapple anywhere to be found. Hmm. Interesting. Because yeah, it doesn't. Wow. Belong. Uh, if Angel you want something said. sweet, you can do barbecue sauce. I'll give you barbecue sauce because on some pizzas it does work, but that's the extent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Angel says you got your children. Holy, <laughs> he's just like, he's he's. Uh, do we need to ban some? I'm a child. I'm You're the one who the needs sweet stuff on your pizza, and I'm the kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're the one putting candy on your pizza. Basically, yeah, the equivalent of fruit candy. <laughs> Might as well put fruit roll-ups on there. Pretty dude. much, just do it. <laughs> yeah, just sprinkle some baby. Get pop, some high chews and pop, just put them right on there, just right yeah. on the pizza like that. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, we can get back to the show now. Uh, what have in. you been playing, Garrett? What have I been playing? 
I have been playing. It's fine if I you haven't been playing nothing. No, I alluded to it earlier. Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. That's right. You did say that. I've been playing that on my Switch because that's the only console it's available on. <laughs> funny enough. Um, <laughs> and uh, holy for smokes, now, there's, there's I, rumors I going around. PC Nintendo games mm, are coming to PC. We'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah, I played this back when it first came out, and I enjoyed it then. But I think what happened is I end up I got to a spot and I got stuck, and then something else came out, and I'm like, screw it. I'll f- go back later and finish it like maybe you know in my head i was like it's one of those games maybe i need to step away and come back like that's why i'm stuck on this puzzle or whatever Uh and i just never came back well the other night i was it hit me so i had a buddy keith who i think i talked about last week as like ah he's not in the games he just plays pc stuff once in a while well he texted me like two days later i i thought he'd listen to the show bro have you heard of this rabbits game yeah well, he's because I I think I, I also mentioned like, oh, yeah, he sold his switch. Like he, he used to have a switch, got rid of it because he just never played it. Well, he just texted me this last week. He's like, dude, I just bought a switch OLED. I'm back in. <laughs> what games do I need to buy? And I'm like, oh, let me tell you. So I was going through my library and like listed off all this stuff. And I, I came Metroid, across Mario Zelda, and Rabbids. Mario. Yeah. Oh, I gave him a big honking list. Um, but I totally had just forgotten about Mario and Rabbids. And so I picked it up and I was like. Oh my gosh, this is a perfect game. Like, I love it so freaking much. It's so well done. Uh, I was I, so happy to be so wrong about that game. It's, and I'm, and there's a sequel coming out this year. So now I'm like, I need to finish this game. You got to do the so Donkey can, Kong DLC first. Dude, it was just on sales last yep. week. So, seven like, bucks. Yeah, dirt cheap. So I just picked that up. Um, and, uh, cause yeah, I'd never played that. So I need to play through the main story, get through the Donkey Kong. But I, I just love it. Like the the characters are so awesome. I just I love Rabid Kong. He's like the best video game character in Hell of History. Like he's gotta be like he's literally in the game for 30 seconds, but it's he's I love him so much. All the Rabbids characters are just fantastic. That humor is just so stupid. And honestly, it's nostalgic for me because I I loved, loved, loved the Wii games, the original one, Rayman Raving Rabbids. Mm-hmm. That game is like probably one of the best games on the Wii. I I would I I put that's my suggestion there. I, I know a lot of people are gonna think I'm wild for that, but Rayman Raving Rabbids, one of the best Wii games. Uh and boy, they they really burn <laughs> They much like the minions, they really overuse the rabbits a little bit over the years, like with the cartoons and all this stuff. They are video like, game minions. Yep. But they kind of like died off a little bit. And then, they, yeah, they came back with this Mario and Rabbids. And it's like, OK, this is this nice is where they start. should stay, though. That's the problem. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, so far they have like this game came out and they haven't really been in anything else. And now the sequel's coming out this year. So I hope, you know, it's not this isn't the start of like chaos again. But uh, yeah, I, I love that game. If you haven't played it, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle on Switch, go check it out, please. It's it's like now, XCOM. It's like an XCOM slash like tactics type game where it's a top down view. It's a gridded map mm-hmm. uh, in this beautiful world. Like I was saying, it looks beautiful on the on the Switch OLED because the colors just pop like the bright screen with all the br- like vibrant colors looks so good. Um, and like they each character can like move so many squares, their weapons are, have a certain range and you're moving around the map and there's different objectives for each, each battle. And it's, it's a lot of fun. It's turn-based, um, no timer or anything like that. Like you're just like going back and forth, moving your three characters and they move their characters and vice versa. So it's fun. It's a blast. <laughs> now for part two, who would you want for the DLC? Because we got Donkey Kong for this one. And you're playing as Bowser. You can play as Bowser in two already. So I... I mean, I I would love to see... <laughs> I would love to see, like, Waluigi because I'm just, like, wild like that. And I, I love him as a character, even though he's, like, <laughs> just this random nobody in all the Mario games. Um, I know I'm not gonna get that. Uh, it would it would be cool at the very least so to get Wario maybe if we don't get. I Wario, was gonna we'd say. Like, I wonder if we get Wario. But I want I want Wario wear Wario. Mm. I think that could imagine work. imagine if they did a Wario and Rabbids Wario wear and Rabbids game mix. <laughs> I don't see why not. I mean, well, basically Rayman Raving Rabbids was Wario wear. 
in a sense just yeah. in, in, instead of micro just different mini, skin yeah instead of instead of micro mini games they were like full size mini games but it's mm-hmm. like uh, that that would be but yeah i i think that could kind of work and that that would honestly be like a fun little like riff or joke that they could do throughout is just like yeah wario where wario you know coming up against these rabbits and like wait we both have like the similar <laughs> similar to the background <laughs> or whatever I, I wonder if i could play into something like that um but uh oh man there's all sorts of stuff going on in the chat here about uh i'm i got banned uh angel banned me from the chat that's fun um whatever let him have yeah, his little fun crazy oh a- angel does say yoshi or waluigi so he's there with me oh, with waluigi yoshi could work. but yoshi would be sick Mm-hmm. Imagine, imagine if you could actually use Yoshi like as a mount too, because like there's no vehicles in the game. But imagine like for like vehicle, extra, they added, for like extra they added movement, Yoshi. and then you can jump off them. Exactly, Ooh. like to help you get around faster, or even like yeah, jump over ledges. Like some of the ledges are too tall, but like imagine being able to just like jump right up there, no problem. That'd be interesting. Sick. All right, well that's all I've been playing. That's all I got for the show this week. Thank you all so much for listening uh, to our show each and every week. We appreciate you all so much for all the views on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Super Gamer Boys, for all the views on YouTube, youtube.com slash Super Gamer Boys, and all the listens and downloads on podcast services all around the globe. You you can search for us and listen to us there. We appreciate it. Um, From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And uh, if you want to help us keep making cool stuff, uh, support us go over to patreon.com slash super gamer boys where you can start out at just a dollar a month send some support our way help us make bigger and better things we are like this close to a new show we'll get so there if you support us just a little bit more come on we can get there we can cross that finish line and get a, you get know a what i show. feel like i feel like as soon as we get over that hump and we start doing the live show i feel like we're gonna like hit our stride and really 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 get moving maybe we just need to bite the bullet and be like just Forget do it. it. You, you you guys aren't gonna do it. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> Just like go for it. Uh, but we'll, we'll give you guys a chance. We'll we'll give you guys a chance to redeem yourselves. So go over to patreoncom boys You know, prove to us that that uh, that you deserve the show. No. Oh my god! <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I I mean that's I didn't mean it. I didn't mean that. Uh, you can also support us over at sgbstore.com. Buy some sweet merch. We got t-shirts. We got stickers. We got coffee mugs phone cases whatever you need over there uh rate and review us on your favorite podcast apps please 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 that helps tremendously uh also uh subscribing on youtube and giving the video a thumbs up if you're watching here please do that shout out to jack sriracha and yate once again for allowing us to use their music on the show fantastic people fantastic music go listen to them on spotify and apple music links down in the description are for spotify there so jump over there listen to that uh, you can find us during the week at supergamerboys.com, Twitter and Instagram at supergamerboys. I am on Twitter and Instagram at gmorlang. Adrian, where can they find you at? They can find me any and everywhere at Homeboy. And uh, JJ, you can find him at the Pizza Hut. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say that too. <laughs> you can find JJ at home with his feet kicked up. That's what Eating you can some do. Some stuffed crust pizza. <laughs> All right. Well. That's all I got for the show this week. All right. Adrian. Well, I'll go ahead and do that then. Uh, for uh, gorgeous Garrett Morlang and for me, Adrian Homeboy Holmes, thank you so much for hanging out with us and for another episode in the books. We are the Super Gamer Boys. And we will catch you on the flippity flop. Well, we'll catch you. JJ won't yeah. catch you, but we'll catch you. No. I also don't like that when you said gorgeous, you like flinched a little bit, like gorgeous Garrett. <laughs> like, like it hurt you to say that. Look, I have a reflex, okay? It's a condition, all right? Uh, Whenever yeah, I have yeah. to give you a compliment, it kind of hurts you.